Okay? In other words, come, let me try to try draw differently for a second. Okay. Laid off. In the old days, the theory was, you got all, and, and it was actually a game rigged by the unions and by the big, big manufacturers. You'd have unemployment compensation, so the government would pay during the layoff until you were recalled. Okay? This assumes a national cyclical model where your company's not downsizing. That is, it assumed oil will be off for six weeks, so let's go bass fishing. You don't live in that world anymore. Your job may be gone, and we can't afford to spend money on you unless we get something for the money. And that fund is a government fund. This is a tax. This is not your voluntary vacation fund. This is a compulsory tax. But unemployment still should be discernible from welfare. Of course it should. Okay. Yeah, but my point is, if we're going to give you, if, if you need unemployment compensation, you should use the free time you now have, because by definition you're unemployed. Right. You should use that time to learn something. If you are not learning something, we are wasting your, our capital base because this person comes over to here, there is no recall. Now they turn to you and say, gee, I just got four, in this case it was four years, most of the time it's 26 weeks. I just got 26 weeks of money paid for by a tax fund. I didn't do anything, now would you please retrain me? Well, why are we wasting 26 weeks of your life and why are we wasting 26 weeks of tax money and not retraining you starting right here? Because our assumption has to be that every adult has to learn their whole life, which is a totally different model. The old model was, hey, I've already learned to work in the steel mill. Why are you bothering me? The steel mill will reopen in a couple of weeks and I'll go back to work. This was the classic industrial cycle for, a, for about 80 years. It died in the 80s. The world market crushed it. Now you're into a totally different model where people, because of the information age, people are going to have to have some level of learning all the time. And if you took all the money we're spending on unemployment compensation and made that in effect, yes, we'll give you unemployment compensation. And by the way, while you're unemployed, learn something so you're more employable. We would have substantially in the last 10 years increased the intellectual capital base of the society. Yes, sir? The ultimate cost to the consumer, if that were made as a, a, a part of the cost of the ultimate product or service, is very significant. When people start thinking that the employee is paying, no, the consumer is paying. Back. Now, furthermore, the cost to the human being. I mean, I felt terrible for this man. We had sent him a signal as a society to do nothing with his life, to waste his life for four years. And he was terrified. And yet, and yet, well, common sense cues off the culture. I mean, if the culture says, why are you being stupid? This is your time to go on vacation. And again, I have relatives out of heavy industry areas who felt it was unpatriotic to go back to work early. I got 13 more weeks left and deer season's about to open. Why would I go back to work now? And this is not apocryphal. I personally have relatives who've done that. That obviously won't work. I mean, it did work. You don't have it worked to for either. 70 years. But it didn't work because we're in the, the, we're in the decay that we're in right now. So obviously, no, but, it, it, but it worked for the individual. Well, it's not, <coughs> huh? It wasn't competitive collectively. I mean, that's right. Oh, that's right. It's, it's, as a society, it's not competitive, even if it's okay for an individual. And for an individual carried to the extreme of the guy in Villarica, it's, it's disastrous. But when we're forced to face the Japanese uh, model, we lose. We have a, we have a, we're in a more competitive world. And so I'm trying, one of, one of the strategic things we're trying to do is find every opportunity to use resources more intensely. So if we pay you for unemployment, we also get you trained. But it's a, it's a constant matrix. So that every time we get a chance, we're doing two or three things at once with the same resource. Because you can't compete in the world market if you're sloppy with either your human or your financial or your physical resources. You've got to have all of them working together if you're going to compete with China and Japan and Germany. Now, let me also suggest to you that this is why you have to replace welfare with a work requirement. That you absolutely have to establish the assertion that work is, the preeminent, is a preeminent American characteristic and that we expect people to work, period. If you're able-bodied, if you're under the age of retirement, you should work. And that goes back to uh, Jamestown, 1607. Now, we also should be, if we're going to compete in the world market, we should eliminate job, government policies that kill jobs. 
One I want to focus on for a minute because it's so fascinating is create a common sense legal system through liability reform. Uh, Edwards Deming picked on litigation as one of the uh, two major impediments to American competitiveness in the world market. And U.S. News uh, last year put together, I thought, a very interesting list. But what they did is they took, a, they took a product you buy. They showed you the retail price. They then showed you the cost to retailer or the, or the cost that it would be without the cost of insurance and litigation. Just look at these because they're fascinating. Eight-foot aluminum ladder, retail price $119, true cost $95, litigation tax $24 on a $119 ladder. Heart pacemaker, $18,000 retail, true cost $15,000, litigation tax $3,000. Two-day maternity stay, retail price $33.67. True cost $28.67, litigation tax $500. Tonsillectomy, retail price $578, true cost $387, litigation tax $191. In that case, it's, it's almost one third of the total. Motorized wheelchair, $1,000. Uh, These are all U.S. News' numbers. True cost $830, litigation tax $170. For manufactured goods and, and for and for health related goods, it's, high, it's higher in those areas. But it's, there's, there's a significant distortion in the system. I mean, and you can tell this when you turn on the TV in the afternoon. And what do you see? You see a lawyer who says, you know, if you haven't sued somebody recently, why don't you bring your Rolodex down to the office and let's go through it together? <laughs> I mean, just just listen. If you're thinking about a competitive world versus a self-destructive, decaying welfare state. Just think of the psychology of a society which bombards itself all day with messages. Have you sued somebody recently? I got a word. Okay. It's equally amazing. A medical helicopter about forty thousand dollars a month. My insurance is sixteen thousand dollars a month. So your medical helicopter, the, the, the getting the not counting whatever the litigation cost is, the, the product liability cost of buying the helicopter, you're actually paying forty thousand for the helicopter and sixteen thousand for your insurance. And this is for a helicopter which is built to go save lives. And we have a perfect safety record for 18 years, so. This is why they bury it. I'm not getting into that, but anyway. Does, does, that, does that framework make some sense now to give you a sense of, and again, it's not that you shouldn't have litigation when appropriate. It's not that you don't want to have the right to sue when it's absurd. But, but where is the standard? How, what, what percent should the society pay to sustain the right to sue? Because nobody's saying don't, don't pay anything. But, it, but is there a point where you reach relative justice at rational cost, or do you maximize the opportunity to sue but then pay such a large cost that you're actually diverting resources out of competing with Germany and Japan and China into fighting yourself? And that's the sort of question you've got to ask about that kind of reform. You've also got to reform red tape. I got an interesting letter from Christopher McIntyre <coughs> in Woodville, Ohio. He says, uh, I'm a 29-year-old, he, he takes the course, uh, I think, on Mind Extension University. He says, I'm a 29-year-old entrepreneur. I own a small heating business in an area in northwest Ohio. The business will be three, four years old in April. It's gone from absolutely zero dollars to projected sales of $400,000 in 1995. And now has four employees. And we pride ourselves in our teamwork um, for we understand that it is united we stand and divided we fall. Uh, I am now going to list the government agencies which keep my business on the edge of existence, absorb 54% of the 1993 gross profit, and hamper our progress through needless paperwork. He then lists 20 agencies. He says one internal revenue, two social security tax, three federal income tax, four state income tax, five local municipal tax, six bureau of employment services, seven auditor of state, eight auditor of county, nine treasurer of state, 10 bureau of workers compensation, 11 state tax collected, 12 state unemployment tax, 13 federal unemployment tax, 14 excise tax and communications, 15 sales tax, 16 gasoline tax, 17 permit fees, 18 license fees, 19 insurance bonds, and 20 paying an accountant $40 an hour to figure out the taxes. <laughs> One problem I have is when no one collects unemployment or uses the workers' compensation fund for a period of three years, why don't we get a percentage of that back? No kidding. See? 